And we've got Corey Ponting versus Javier <coughs> Arevalo, sorry. Uh, and it looks like another sort of, let's see, Esper. Oh, it's 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 Death Right Esper, or what did uh, what did Brian uh, Deathblade Esper Deathblade? Oh, there we go. We have it on the screen. Thank you, Choi. Well, you know we had it as four color uh, blade earlier. Uh, yes, Choi, you are more creative than Jeremy, or at least you're just listening to what uh, what Brian called his list, apparently. So Corey Ponting on Omnitel or No Intel. Now this is a much more interesting matchup in many ways, um, and I'm going to take that back ever so slightly. <laughs> I thought that there were some main deck force of wills in uh, Javier's list, uh, but that is not the case. He does have um, five fast removal, or sorry, uh, discard in Thoughtseize and Inquisition, um, and he also has. Two Liliana, three Jace. I'm actually a little surprised that Corey lost to this in game one. But I mean, the thing is, you can absolutely have that game where they go, you know, turn one, Inquisition, turn two, uh, Dark Confidant, turn three, uh, Thoughtseize, Inquisition, turn four, Liliana, and just really get you. Yeah, uh, now we are in game two, so it's a uh, post board, and he does have access to three copies of Force of Will, two more counter spells. Uh, two, pair, two copies of Surgical Extractions, two Vendillion Clicks, uh, so several answers. Oh, two more oh, additional Thoughtseize, one additional Thoughtseize. Uh, so kind of a lot that he can work with against Omnitel out of the board. Corey Ponting, on the other hand, on the, uh, the no-intel side of things. Yep, that no-intel, the distinction being omniscience. Omniscience costs, I think, um, 87 mana, and uh, what it does is it makes it so that your spells are free. Now, yep. normally Omniscience would be an incredibly difficult spell to cast. Look at that mana requirement there. As I said, 73 mana. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if you put it into play for free with a show and tell, well, that means that everything else you do becomes free, and it can be pretty crazy. This deck runs Burning Wish to get into Petals of Insight, and uh, from there, that's your whole deck. So each one of those blue mana symbols represents 22 mana, is that right? Oh no, it's a, the 7 represents 70, and then the 3 blue is uh, 30. I thought it was 22 plus 22 oh. plus 22, 66 plus 7, <laughs> 73. Caracas for Javier Aravello. So Deathrite Shaman and Caracas in play. Now, the way that the uh, Omnitel deck wins, it can win with Gristlebrand, it can win with Emrakul. Caracas a neat answer to either of those as victory conditions, but it can also win with Grape Shot. Corey punting, punting, putting a third land into play. <laughs> I don't think he punted by putting a third land into play, Adrian. <laughs> and Javier Aravello. I'm gonna crack his uh, flooded strand there. Access. Yeah, we finish each other's. Uh... Yeah. Things. Sentences. That's it. Access to four mana here from Javier. Looks like we've got an Inquisition of Kozilek. A few more moving parts in Corey's list than uh, the list that we just saw from Todd Anderson. Inquisition on the stack. You know what they, you know what Monty Python says? Uh, I do not. Nobody expects the Kozilek Inquisition. Gotcha. Inquisition takes out a uh, red elemental blast from Cory. See, Gristlebrand, Gristlebrand, Force of Will, Force of Will. I think it may have been Spanish Inquisition, now that I think about it. Geist of St. Traff put into play using a land of Cory Ponting's uh, from his graveyard to fuel it through the Deathrite Shaman. He's got a Force of Will in his hand, so uh, right now, because Cory has a Force of Will himself, the gates are somewhat down for just a moment. Yeah, double if, Force, double Gristlebrand in Cory's hand. If Cory draws a show-and-tell right now, I think that uh, he'll take this game over. 
but it has to be right now. Otherwise, we're going to see a very fast clock that could end this game quite rapidly. Yeah. We saw it last round how quickly a Geist of St. Traft can end the game. And of course, if you play standard at all, you are well aware of how quickly a Geist of St. Traft can end the game. Uh, it applies to standard, it also applies to legacy. If you don't have an answer to that card, quickly it will end you. And, so, uh, Corey, Corey does not draw draws us. Burning Wish. Yeah, not a, not a show and tell, but... Uh, Side... But, uh, I was just going to say, yeah. but not a dead card at all. Yeah. Sideboard counterspell in Javier Aravello's hand. This means that uh, he can do a lot to put up resistance against Corey. Meanwhile, hitting him for a total of potentially eight a turn with the six from the Geist plus Angel and the two from the Death Rite Shaman. This is a real problem right now for Corey. Yeah. Also, Corey, uh, no access to red mana, so that Burning Wish, not a dead <laughs> card, assuming he can cast it. But if he can't cast it, it is absolutely a dead card. Another Death Rite Shaman. <clears throat> Finds that access to red mana, though. Scalding Tarn. There is a pyroclasm in uh, his sideboard, but he has to get that to resolve. What is that white card in Javier's hand? Full art disenchant? Okay. That's what Choi says it is. We'll, we'll go with that. Makes sense as well. It's just a little tough to, tough to see it. You're gonna bring that up on the screen for us, Choi? You don't have that one? Okay, no problem. Javier has it. We'll just look at it in his hand. You see a uh, counterspell, force of will, disenchant, and one other card in Javier's hand. What's the card behind the disenchant? Have you seen that? Do you know what it might be? I was not uh, able to check that out from this angle. That it may be Snapcaster Mage. That's what it kind of, it looks like it's a blue card with dark art. That's why I think it's Snapcaster. That looked like a Snapcaster to me. Yeah, it is. So he's got Snapcaster, Disenchant, Counterspell, Force of Will. Plenty of blue cards to use uh, with Force of Will also. Can just naturally Counterspell something if he has two blue up, which at the moment he does not. So Scalding Well, he Tarn, can make a blue with that Death Rite Shaman. That's right, he could. So, uh, Corey is... Corey has cracked his patch and found a volcanic island with the Scalding Tarn. Does Death Rite Shaman just do everything? Death Rite Shaman's awesome. It says it in the text box. Does anything you want it to do. That and Jace the Mind Sculptor. It's also an elf. Yeah, I mean, and a shaman. Well, well the, the elf part seems yeah. pretty awesome. I don't me. think the shaman part's that relevant. All right, so Corey. Burning Wish being cast. What do you think, Javier? How do you feel about that? He says, go ahead, wish for what you want. Corey decides what he would like, what he would wish for, if he had one wish, one burning wish. It's important. He finds a pyroclasm. He wishes he had a pyroclasm, and his wishes came true. I would wish for more wishes. Yeah, that would be... Of course, he would probably be die idea. before you got to use them. Yeah, you have to cast all those wishes, and then finally, like... By the time you you have all these things that you want and can't really get anywhere with it, so Death Rite Shaman gonna uh, remove a pyroblast from Corey's graveyard and do do a little damage. So with double Death Rite, Geist of Saint Traft, ten damage represented on the board. Here comes Geist and the Angel. There's six of that ten. Death Rite Shamans each representing another two each. Main phase brainstorm coming after that? Yes. Looks like it. Hunting for some land. Or some more blue spells for that matter. Knows that if he doesn't have an answer for Pyro uh, I'm sorry, not Pyroblast, Pyroclasm from Corey, he's gonna lose his Death Rite Shamans. He may even be fine with that and just decide I'm gonna activate the shamans and then go ahead and um Yeah, no, he's not gonna let that happen. <laughs> he's gonna lose both his Death Rite Shamans and his Geist of Saint Traff. For some reason I was just looking at the shamans. Angel token being uh, retrieved, I believe. Corey at four.
Is that accurate? If four is at four, is it just not? I mean, if four is at four, doesn't doesn't Javier just death rate him to death? Well, he has to have enough black. If the life totals are accurate, he does not yeah. have enough black to finish. You're right. Him. You're right. That's what it is. Brainstorm resolves. He's okay. Dark Confidant, Wasteland, and I'm gonna hide that card, says Javier. Oh, it is a counterspell. Okay. I see it's counterspell. He can Wasteland that Volcanic Island. That's another way of stopping that Pyroplasm. Well, and not to mention his counterspell plus Force Will in hand. That also stops Pyroplasm. But he's gonna go ahead and do it every which way he can. He's gonna go ahead and waste that, force Cory to draw a red source here. I believe there to... are no longer any outs for Cory. Does Cory have, uh, how many red sources does he have? I mean, he's got to have... Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's not going to be able to... With the hand Javier has, he can cast the Pyroclasm with that top deck of the correct land. Then Javier will counterspell it with some form or other. Cory will counterspell back with Force of Will, tossing Force of Will. And Javier will fight that last counterspell war with either the counterspell or the Force of Will, whichever one he didn't cast, and thus seal Cory's fate. I'm with you on all that. So Corey finds another volcanic island. He's going to try to cast the uh, the pyroclasm with force of will backup. Here it comes. Here's pyroclasm. Counterspell off of land and deathrite shaman. <coughs> Corey says, I will force, removing force. Javier says, I will force, removing Snapcaster Mage, or removing Counterspell. Jeez. Corey That's says, yeah, it. no answer, and Javier Aravalo over Corey Ponting. Two games to zero, Esper Deathblade over Omnitel. And uh, if you're wondering what Esper Deathblade is, it's just Esper Stoneblade with Deathrite Shaman. Yep. No, that is a. Uh, uh, who coined that? Was that well, New Choi that coined that? Was, was that you that I, coined it? It was uh, Brian Brown Dwin, I believe, that coined it because that was what it was tweeted. Uh, he did that deck tech with Ruben. Boys to Men ABC BBD? Yes, that guy. Yeah. Uh, color Me Bad. No, no. BBD. Okay, cool. Brian Brown 